Greetings everyone, how are you doing today? Uh, I have a, a new trimmer. So I kind of figured out something. Um, you know, some fixing these things. So many of these things, right? There's probably around five, maybe six, but five at, on average um, gaskets that you're going to replace to bring this engine back to life and put this back in service. They usually don't really break any other way, you know? So some, depending on how old it is, they tend to be a little harder to find gaskets. You can also acquire the skill set to make gaskets, but some of them are hard to, to make, you know, like the exhaust one you know, requires metal. You have to cut metal. Finding the metal part is not hard, but you know, it's all about how much time you want to spend doing it. And uh, other than that, once you know that you can get all the gaskets right in advance, then you know for sure you got the engine part taken care of, but then you have the carburetor. So you need to know that the carburetor itself is something that you can actually replace or find. So in general, these are, they usually use Walbro, Zama. That's what I've noticed. And uh, they tend to be fairly easy to find as a full carburetor replacement or the gaskets within the carburetor. So. If you're going to do any sort of repair on these things and you want to save yourself some time, look up the engine information beforehand and, and then go look for the parts. So, with that being said, let's move on. So we have, uh, this is a Craftsman, by the way, and it looks like uh, they did some uh, marketing thing called Incredible Pull. Can't really see it too well there, but you can see it here. And uh, it's a 32cc engine, so it should have a, quite a bit of power on it. Um, this primer bulb here is a little stiff. So I'm concerned about that failing or in the process of failing. So, oops, sorry about that. One second here. Let's tighten that up. <clears throat> so it uh I don't see any visible cracks, but it's got the usual like coloration. That indicates to me that it's uh, in the process of like failing, but we'll check once we get there. Um, I don't really know. Prime flip, prime flip pull. What, what is that? Is that something that's supposed to be there that's broken off? I know, we gotta look into that. Uh, let's see if that's even important. This is a forty to one mixture and uh, the let's see well, the engine turns but this did not so that's not good yeah that didn't didn't do anything so <laughs> get ourselves a bigger issue there um I wonder what that means, right? And, uh... I don't know. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, let's just see what's going on with that down there, and then we'll uh, pull the brake. Let's go into it a little bit more. Let's see um, some important information there about the engine. And do all the same typical stuff. Check for spark. I want to look and see what this does before we get too deep into this. Okay, let's see if it's worth our time, you know what I mean? So this thing has definitely been worked on before. It's got a lot of, uh, a lot of other people's cooties on it, you know? When I say cooties, I mean like uh, a lot of strange things. Uh, this is a uh, 5 8 the, uh, I'm never really a big fan of this model of uh, I'm sorry, this design of engine. I, I never really liked the, um, the spark plug at the bottom. Thing. They're a little annoying to work on. Um, okay, let's let's see if this. Well, you can't see it, but I'm gonna tell you. I'm finally get shocked. The last time. Yep, this spark. 
Okay. So we have spark, and we have a really nasty spark plug. I mean, this one looks like it's, it's had a bit of a fight. Focus. That's all about it. So that spark plug's really carmined up. Looks like it got pretty hot one time too. Uh, yeah, let's just rip it up. The shroud we're gonna pull off has four bolts, but one's missing. Uh, this is a T20, so. Gonna get a better tool for this. These are uh, thicker threaded, so they're going into plastic. in the fourth one over there on on that side so keep that into consideration it look like that okay okay inside of here oh okay so here's that button that I was pushing didn't understand what it does, but let's see. Um, no, that was like that. Okay, so that spins. Oh, I see. So that was turning this thing here. Looks so like that was a choke. Yeah, this red button there. Hmm. Sat on top of that plastic. All right. Sorry. We look like we have hair in here, some kind of air filter also, circular air filter, and uh, that, where did that go? And that was around here, so, okay, I see, this carburetor's there, air is going to go in right there, hair, and um, looking interesting, let's see, carburetor. What's happening with this here? So when we pull on the trigger here, hmm. okay, I see a butterfly moving. Yeah, I'm bringing it around so you can take a look. Shake your cam. Here we go. So I pull on that trigger here, and let's see what happens. It's a little bit more light. And then deep inside of here, you'll see that there's a, uh, yeah, that's useful. Well, inside of it, a butterfly moves, so. Looks like we have hmm. uh -huh. okay, it looks like uh, that's uh, uh, over here's uh, an idle adjuster. Doesn't look like it looks like it's touching anything. Oh, that's adjusting. 
No. Yeah, I don't know either. Well, anyway, we'll figure this out. So the thing to do to help you uh, understand what to do with putting things back is uh, understand if, that's obviously if the fuel lines are still intact, um, what exactly is uh, the return and uh, what's the intake of fuel. I mean, it's a 50-50 chance to get it right or wrong, right? So not, not the biggest problem in the world. But anyway, uh, see here, they, both of these lines are petrified. They're really like rock hard, right? And... Um, this orangey one kind of snakes back here. Turn the less light on for you. Snakes back here. Right through this top hold here. And then comes out, goes down here. Not sure why they need an adapter on that. And the back of this primer bulb here. That, uh, that goes back, the greenish line goes back into the tank, right? So, let's see what we have in the tank. Right? So in the tank, you can see right there that the fuel filter is right, the greenish line is the return. So, the green is the return, that means this one's returning, and this is going to be the fuel in. Now, there's another, there's a line. Okay, so this, okay, this is fuel in, this top part of the carburetor. This bottom part here goes into the uh, primer bulb, right? And then, uh, that would be this right here. Uh, Right, so this goes bottom. This bottom one here goes from the carburetor to the primer bulb. This is fuel out back into the tank. This is the fuel return. So uh, yeah, I, th this setup is like they don't. I don't. I don't. I don't think they make this much design anymore. They just kind of consolidated the primer bulb. That's not, that's not even called a primer bulb. It has a different name, but um, it does a similar thing. It just pulls fuel through. But uh, they actually just sort of put they just put that on the carburetor itself and just made it a lot easier. So I'm assuming that's why the manufacturers no longer make this design. And this upside down design, I don't see too much of it anymore on the newer stuff. This is very much like data in itself. Let's just tear into this, pull some stuff off. We'll take the muffler off. Um, now I think the muffler here is, uh, those are, uh, those are T27s. So. <sighs> tiny Now this has uh, four gaskets all together on this engine. So that's uh, kind of awesome. Not too many parts to fail out of. I think I'll probably try to improve my skill set some more. Work on like making gaskets because I think it has a huge amount of savings that can be had if I can like make make more gaskets for myself you know all right so here is the uh, oh there we go that's the gasket that's the first one that's the uh this is the uh exhaust gasket we'll put that one down and uh this is going to be you need this going to you know some latrolysis or something down there but I think this would be a good try good time to try to do some like vinegar, a vinegar dip to try to remove all this rust, you know? Yeah, we'll go, we'll, we'll look into that. Okay. And, uh, let's pull this off. Now this is a T, uh, T20, the carburetor. 
Now this one's a little bit more proud than the others. So this bottom one it sits up a little higher. So that kind of is going to help you with the orientation when you put this back. This right here. So the it's higher, the higher parts at the bottom right there. Now the threads on these are a little thicker, so that's interesting. I don't know if it does it follow the same convention of like screwing into plastic. You know, I don't know. But we'll find out, won't we? So there you go. Yeah, I bet you they do screw into plastic. So we have a like that. See that? Okay. And then we have these two longer screws here with washers that held that on. And um, we have a carburetor here. And then that'll slide right off. And then we'll, yeah, there you go. These few lines are petrified. So, okay, be careful. On the back side here, we have uh, to uh, disconnect the. All right, so we got a, a linkage here. We don't want to pull too hard because these things are very, very brittle. There you go. So that's all. And some few lines off of here. That's just seriously just breaking. That's one. Remember, this here is the is the intake, and this bottom one goes out to the uh, primer bulb. <laughs> bottom. What's bottom? <sighs> it's just a re reference to how you want to perceive the world. Right? If you're at the bottom, you're looking up, then that's the top. If you're at the top, looking down, well, that's the bottom. Right? But if you're uh, flip yourself around. <laughs> There's something brilliant to be said right there, but I kind of messed it up. In other words, your uh, bottom and up is a subjective reference point. And because they are subjective, well, that just broke right off. It's kind of silly to even put too much emphasis on the bottom, an orientation that is, because after all, it depends on where you are. Come off, get off. Okay, so that's off, right? So again, uh, this went into here, this bottom one, the straight one goes out to the primer bulb. This goes right from the fuel tank. Uh, with the, uh, in. Now this carburetor is, uh, what is this? Oh, it's Zama, cool. It's a P22A54, hmm. wonder if we can get you to see this. Oh. Okay, so, so the carb information right there. All right, first off, it's the Zama. You can see that. There you go. And uh, the carburetor is very well labeled, lucky us. Maybe a little hard to see. There? Yeah, there you go. It's P22A54A. So that's good. Got a lot of good Claire carburetor information. Uh, this is the high and low adjuster right here. Right here. And it looks like they have uh, some kind of, kind of um, uh, they might have a cat, I don't know. They have something that's, looks like they need a, a special tool to like adjust. I'm not sure if these are removable or not. We'll figure it out. Okay, so that's the carb adjuster there. And uh, let's just continue to take more parts apart. The carburetor. Uh, we have 
four screws, so it seems to hold this plate in place. So these looks like they're, no, that's too, too big. It's kind of loose. Hmm. Yeah, I don't like that. How about we use something a little bit more industrious? There we go. No, that's too big. Okay. Just going down the lines here. What do we have? T27 is too large. T25. That's T30. No, here's T25. That's better. Let's try this T25. I kind of uh, been staying away from using the power tools because the uh, air compressor is a little loud, you know. Well, not really. I don't really care about your ears. Let's turn the volume down. Um, I do care, but not that much. It's mostly the um, power tools to kind of like I'll I don't get a good feel for when to stop sometimes and then what happens is like kind of stripping stuff not into that it's like a pet pee of a mine holds the uh that has well there's a gasket here we're gonna have to remove that gasket there okay I guess, uh, that just kind of holds the uh the gas tank so that's an interesting design okay and uh we have a gasket back here. So let's just... I think it just goes like that. So let's pull that gasket off. Like the bottom of the crankcase. Here. Not really sure why they did so many adapters. You know, like... There you go, like that. I'm not sure why they put those in a fuel line, because... You can just feed the fuel line all the way through without... Any need to have an adapter there. Uh, that's that. And uh, primer bulb. There you go. So that green, that green one's for the top. That green one is the uh, return. Green is, okay, so at the top is the return. Sorry. The top is the return. The bottom is the, uh, from the, uh, the curvy part of the carburetor. The straight part of the carburetor. So that there, this here, goes into here. Good. So we gotta, yeah, this is, gonna, you'll all love. Let's see. Can we pull this out? Yep, yeah, it's, it's trash. Let's kind of peel this off. Okay, that's good. Can get this off too. Yeah, it's good. No fight in there. Okay, we're good. So we're just gonna, this seems to be fine still. You know, we'll check. I'm gonna. 
I want to test it and see what we get if it holds. Well, that's a dicey one, isn't it? <laughs> I'm thinking I might have to replace this thing. Hmm. All right. Okay, let us see what we got. Crank case bottom here. Here's our third gasket. Do we need to do a uh, way to separate this from the uh, from this part of the uh, trimmer? Should figure out the name of that part. What is what is in there? It's pretty small. Funny. Does that work? Yeah, it works awesome. Here we go. This is a T15. Alright. T15. That one's a little hard. Uh, look, I'll show you at the end. The uh, it's it's one of those. Um, it goes into metal, so it's uh, threads very different. Is there something here? Come on. Oh, no. Maybe under here. get back and see it already yeah that's good so what I do right I just kind of like um, you're not seeing it but what I, I magnetize this a little bit but just go like that touching that on there and then it gives me the ability to slide it in there and just kind of like pull them out you know so just in case you're wondering why I do that 
cut. There we go. Awkward. Yeah, that finally fell out. Okay. Come on. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Here we go. All right. Let's show you what they look like. We have four. Those four. Right. And here. some uh, wires to disconnect here. Black one goes closest to the uh, cylinder. Red one's further away. Okay. So should we have to pull this off now? What do you think? Maybe. Let's see. Can I lift this off? some concerns about the clutch plate itself and what's happening inside of it and um, just because of the way that's not turning the uh, shaft so I'm gonna, we're going to have to pull this off I, I can't separate the uh, engine from the uh, I mean the uh, flywheel from the actual uh, pull return so I think I need to look at the um, look at the, uh, what do you call it, uh, flywheel anyway, so I gotta pull this off, so I should just go ahead and do that. Um, I think, yeah, there we go, that's probably three of these, maybe the T27, T25, maybe. That's too big. All right. Yeah. Feels a little loose. Twenty seven, twenty five, T twenty, try T twenty. Yeah, that's perfect. There you go. I should do is uh you know what this these wires here um kind of snake through there you go i want to say get these wires out of the way right so we have it's like on that side of the engine block is what came through i think 
kind of like just kind of slide it down and around so I can work you. Okay. So down and around and through there. Is that going to work? Hmm. You know, if it's hard to take out, it's going to be hard to put back. That's how it usually how it works. Okay, good. So it just kind of snakes through. Up and around. I'm sure there's a path. Alrighty. Back up here we go. It's going to loosen these. I want to pull all the way off because the. Um, Let it just drop. What's happening? tend to uh, a little bit uh, thicker threaded. What's going to hell? What the hell happened to my... Christ, where did it go? Three of those. So I'll show you those in a second. Let me just uh, see if I can pull that. Okay, great. That's that's much easier. All right, here. I'll give you a close up of those. These are, are a little on the medium size for this, and they tend to be considerably more um, on the thicker threads. Don't drop them. All right. So I wanted to test, make sure everything is fine from the shaft all the way down. If you look. Uh, right here Look for that so you can see that spin um, I'm using a 7 30 seconds socket Just kind of sliding it in right here right And Just trying to get that to turn So you can see that does that does turn not the best choice of tool to grab that, but it does turn it. Um, that means, <laughs> well, that's fine. So we got to look at the, uh, maybe the, um, it's just that good, the uh, clutch. All right, so we're going to try to, like, get this, separate that. So that looks like a... A smaller oh yeah that's good it works that's uh t15 okay now i think this is gonna I don't know if I can, yeah it's gonna turn the engine okay so that holds hmm you know what we can do we got a we gotta um, 
Yeah. I got you, buddy. Go like this stuff. Uh, let's just turn that. And I'm going to drop this into here. Okay, good. Now the engine's locked. That. And this should just okay. So there's the clutch. Now what happens, right? As the engine spins, the faster it gets, this expands. As it expands, it pushes against this. As it pushes against it, it, it causes the uh, shaft to spin that we were trying to turn. Now, uh, uh, it's, it's, you know, I don't want to do it off camera, but anyway, we'll. Uh, I gotta get, I wanna get this clutch off of there. Oh, it has our, it says off, turn that way. So, I guess it might just spin right off. I think it's all this holds the uh, engine on. That's what's. I gotta get that unscrewed, I think. Is this. Oh, there's a gasket here. I mean, a, a washer here. That's good to know. Let's pull that off. Okay, save that. Yeah, it's it is off. I'm assuming it just kind of screws into that. Don't want to damage anything. Alright, I need a little personal time. So I got the engine and the chainy, and uh, I think I might get a little bit more leverage like this. Gonna screws on. Right. Well, missing something? Am I breaking something? I think I need to put a little bit more of this in here. The longer side, that is. Just really kind of pack it in there. Okay.
might be a better tool for this. I don't think it's this one. So I kind of learned something new to that. Did anybody ever hear about the, uh, the term Karen? It's like a pejorative term. That was, that was new to me. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Someone posted it on. Uh, they were very upset about it. Was confused as a Karen. Well, that's a pejorative term now. Someone's first name has become an insult. I don't know what to do with this thing here. I'm open to opinions. You know, anyway. it's, you know, don't keep to yourself. thing does not want to move. Not one bit. Ah, there it is. Just need the right angle. That was a tough one to break loose, by the way. Makes me wonder if there's a clutch puller tool. Just gives you a better grip on stuff. Okay, so we have that. Can you see? Yeah, you still can see. Okay, so the label comes is out front. It just kind of sits in there. We have a washer right here. So the washer goes in between the clutch that like this. Let me see if there's any witness marks. Look at the witness marks. Are bumped up against that. So clutch looks fine. I should be able to just slide that off. Yeah, awesome. There we go. And that's our pull start. All the threads are there. Okay, I just think that this clutch is actually in really good condition. That's why when I was pulling on it, nothing was happening. Let's... All right, so I was telling you about Karen, and uh, you know, I'll be. I was very shocked. I was like, oh, that's a pejorative term. Yeah, it's T30. So my friend was uh, very upset about this usage. And these, uh, one of those, like, people, uh, T27, that's very, um, you know, passionate. And it's hard to engage that person because they tend to be, they tend to be a little bit, uh, angry about everything. So you ask any questions or try to make a joke, it doesn't really come across well. So what I did, I tagged, I was like, I know four, at least three or four Karens, so I tagged them. I said, you know, I, I'm offended by this, you know. And, uh, I tagged all four Karens in the post, <laughs> and he was, uh, he was like, you know, if you don't like what I, if you're offended by what I post, you don't have to, you just have to, you know, block me or, I mean, uh, unfriend me or something along those lines. And I was like, wow, oh, dude. And I responded with like, oh, I was just trying to make a joke. You know, none of the Karens responded, so that was lame. I was hoping they would also just, you know, make fun of it or be whatever. But anyway, the point is, it's like, I, I don't really know much about it. And it seems like it's something 
I might be interested in looking at because that seems like I have blind spots, you know, I just I just never saw anything like that ever happening culturally. So that kind of creeped up on me out of nowhere. So it's uh, very big and girthy ones. You can't you can't can't mistake them. All right, there we go. So what we have is a nice, dirty, carved up piston. And uh, that piston is an easy to come out piston too. It's just like slides. But let's take a look at it and make sure we can see if we can see anything about it that's specific, you know, to help us with the orientation when we put it back. So, because this just kind of slides right off. There you go, like that. All right, so it looks like it just slides off. And there is absolutely nothing to tell me or designate or denote an orientation. All right, cool. That's fine. Looks like it doesn't matter. All right, so that's the piston. We're going to give that a nice little bath. All right, we have another gasket here. Oh, that's oh, that's going to come off easily. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, it is. Okay. Okay. That's the third gasket. There should be another gasket, I think. Ah, oh, famous last words. Yeah, that's looks like that's all we have. One here, one there, and uh, the muffler. Really, just three? Mm. Yeah, right there. This one's this trimmer is way simpler than the others. We got a fuel filter. Right, clean that. Up. Uh, yeah. I'm, there's nothing else to it, ladies and gentlemen. There's nothing else. I'm thinking of... I don't know. We'll cross the bridge when we get there. Alright, Karen. Have a good night. So we have uh, this magneto. I'm going to pull that off. It's like T27. No, too big. No. T20. Yeah, T20. That's good to know. This is where it grounds out. Okay. Don't, don't lose it. Okay, so this here grounds out to the body. It's important to keep that in mind. Let's put that there. Let's get a close-up so you can see the uh, fastener. See if there's any difference between the two of them. Yep, they're definitely different, all right. No, they're not, they're the same. Okay, I made it up. Okay, so. That's what we're working with. Let's see, just like that. Cool, huh? Yeah, that's right. So that just sat like that. That's the orientation. Okay. We're gonna want to uh, to bait this little friend of ours. Let's see what we're looking at. So you can see in there, this thing is. 
Oh, what did I do to you, buddy? Ooh, that's a nice crosshatch. I haven't seen one of a nice crosshatch in anything in a while. See that right there? That's what they usually want. It gives a good seal. Um, yeah, not so good on that side. It's, I wish there was a way to deglaze these things. I can't do it with a honing tool because of this problem here. See that right there? That doesn't allow me to like, as soon as the honing tool turns, it goes right here and it catches, it just breaks the stone right off. So it's uh, annoying because I do want to figure it out and I haven't found a way to do it. So if you know a way to deglaze these things without having to take it to a machine shop, you know, let me know. So I think I found it. Uh, actually, I not think I know I did. Uh, I found the uh, last gaskets right here. And, uh, it was, was kind of like hiding out. I was like, I know there's f four. So that's that uh, gasket. So we have four gaskets we're going to need. Not bad. Should probably check this primer bulb. See what the condition is of that. So kind of like just kind of it clips into there. Hmm. No, it doesn't. Or yes, it does. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. Okay, that's gone out. Alrighty. I'll clean this up. Check and see if that's... I don't know if it's like melted. I don't know what's going on there. So this is a little hard to see, but uh, down in there it says C... I can see it or not. C1U, I think. Or C10? C10? I think that might be the identification for this carburetor. It is C10. So then it's a C10 carburetor, and it also has like that number on there. I showed it to you earlier. It's a P22A 5A, 54A. So that's all the identification I have I can extract. It's Zama. We have a few adjusters, I mean, um, high and low adjusters. Throttle right here. Hmm. All right. I'm going to have to take this gasket off again. I have not found the best and fastest way, most economical way to do this. Um, it's usually just consumes quite a bit of time. Now, if you can see the surface, you want to look for any marring, right? Now you can see this, first of this aluminum um, is really, this particular part of aluminum, this aluminum that's used here is um, you know, actually, it's a it's a composite of a couple of different types of metals, and it's particularly soft. So I'm gonna it's gonna be hard to see, but it's so hard to get it right here. But there are no gashes on this right now, right? But I'm gonna use my brass wire wheel to uh, get this off, and then there'll be gashes, and then I'll have to sand it to get it as smooth as possible again. Now, if anybody knows a better way to get that off, those off, that'd be great, because, uh, you know, I've used the old plastic scraper, WD-40, and I've soaked them in different solvents, like, you know, um, eraser, uh, what do you call it, uh, goob, goo, I think it's called, it erases, like, um, mistakes, you know. 
I've done like uh, WD-40, I've done other solvents like acetone. Nothing seems to be able to take this stuff off easily once it's soaked. So I've also tried to reuse a, um, a rubber wheel to remove um, like decals on cars. Uh, that just didn't work. It would get caught right here and just snap right off. So I'm open to suggestions. I haven't found any good solution ever, and I can't come up with one on my own at this moment. Now, so use the brass wire wheel here. And, uh, there's still a WD-40. So kind of soften it up, lubricate it, you know. Hey, sorry about the little bad video the last time the camera got bumped a little but you can see it actually turned out quite nice there's not a there's no gash marks really to worry about sometimes this Whatever they make this out of, it varies, and it, there's enough variance that the um, sometimes it's softer, sometimes it's harder. I'm not really sure, but you know, there's no gash marks. So, but I do, yeah. There's a little bit here. I do want to. Um, it's, gonna look, it's hard to tell. The angle. Well, anyway, I'm, we're going to sand this, just a light sand, like a, you know, like a thousand grit sandpaper. That's what we're going to do next, just to get this really nice and glossy. Now let's wet sand this. Uh, we're going to use uh, a 3000 grit sandpaper, and we're going to wet sand it with some WD-40. And, you know, if you had a nice super flat surface to use instead of the this is flat but you know it's not 100 percent true it's not machine is flat if you can uh, get a nice flat piece of uh, machine steel yeah from a machinist that'd be you know the best thing you can do for this you could run this through a plane or two probably which I do have, but I'm not building a spaceship, so it's going to keep it simple for now. Okay, that's good. There's no more, like, uh, there's no more gashes, gouges, I suppose, yeah. There's no more gouges on this. So we are looking good with the overall um, quality of this maiden surface and uh, it should seal very well. All right, so this is a little hard to see, but um, this, it, it's amazing how, uh, let's get a light here. The, the condition of this cylinder is pretty awesome. Right, so, um, it's got some cross hatching left at the bottom, like down here. I don't know if you can see it. See that? That's what you want a cylinder to look like. All right. Now the problem is uh, further up, like up here past the exhaust, right? Um, you don't have a lot of cross hatching going on. It's a little glazed over. This is the kind of stuff that creates like um, a not so good seal. 
with the rings as they begin to like uh, slowly wear away. So you get some passage to feel that gets through there you don't want. Now, I think this is a great candidate for uh, trying to like create a little cross hatching because this space is deep enough from the top where the spark plug is to here before it gets to these like uh, passages where um, the it looks that would be the where air you know this I gotta figure out what I have a feeling I'm not sure some of you might be able to correct me but I believe that's where air would go as the piston comes down it'll create a pulse and pushes air past that and then that pulse will create the um, the suction in a diaphragm of the carburetor. I think that's what those passages are for. Uh, I can't wait to look at the, the four stroke and see how they uh, construct their cylinder head. And uh, we'll get a, we'll get to that. We'll do that one probably next. But anyway, yeah, let's uh, let's just try to hone out the bottom part and uh, hopefully not break this. All right, so I got to get a chest of tension on the uh, on the stones, like the outward tension, and I need to also just look at what. How far I'll be able to go up before it's problematic. We're gonna have very little tension on this, right? So to get more tension, it's gonna tighten that down a little bit more, like that. Yeah, that's perfect. You don't want too too much, just enough to get started. Okay, cool. Let's give it a shot. All right. What do we have to lose? Just a cylinder head. Great. So don't get your glasses. Right? You know, like, uh, be generous with the WD-40. go too fast but not too slow all right see so I can got caught there Need a little bit more tension Cross hatching, see what we got. Yeah, it's getting there. It's definitely not as glazed over as it was before. You know that you don't need to do this for too long, just let you know. Alright, let's do it. Just a little bit more, a little bit more tension, just a small amount. Squeeze that in, drop it in. Let's give it a more WD 40. That just broke this off. Okay, good. We are done. You can see I lost two stones. I just got caught. I went up too high. And that's what happens. Looks like they were just glued on too. So, lucky for me, I might be able to save, glue them back on, and save it. I, I doubt it. Other than that, this thing, I'm gonna. I would have to like undo the little. I don't know what those are. They could be like they, some kind of rivet. Well, anyway, you get the point.
So we got some gaskets we need to, uh, we ordered, right? And uh, just kind of match them up. That's that gasket there. And this is uh, part number 7530619. And then we have a carburetor gasket 7916106754. Those still look the same. This is the same. This is the uh, gasket number 7531208. Carburetor gasket, right? No, ga gasket crank case, I think. Yeah. So that is. Those look. That looks the same as that. Now this one. This one looks a little, a little different. Okay, this is the gasket cylinder here. And uh, that's part number 7530 Cylinder gasket, right? But it's a little different because it um it doesn't seem to have see this one has yeah. There's a little bit of glare, glare, glare. There's a little bit of a cutout here. That this one does not. So we'll let's see what happens. Okay, so uh, we got a couple of things we want to do. Uh, let's. Uh, so this is. Um, oh yeah, that's gonna be fun to look at. So this has a stop, uh, kill. Oh, a ground. It grounds out. Remember that. So those two we had to put back for the magneto. This one is for the top there. And I think these are probably T20 maybe. Any um, Westworld fans? Yeah. I have a a bit, the new Westworld is the one HBO produced. I really love that show, man. That thing. They did the season finale two days ago. And, uh. God, I love that show. They did a really good job with it. I'm looking forward to, uh. You know, the new season. A lot of people have had some very negative <laughs> responses to it. I'm like, listen, dude. You know, like they did, did their best. I thought, I thought, I thought it was a good show. You know, I mean, I really enjoyed it. I was a little sad about um, the uh, principal. You know, died. So there were like a lot of principals, but you know, we all know that. That the uh, blondie was the uh, principal. She did an, a stellar job, man. That woman carried that show. Yeah, and now she's gone. At least, at least I don't. I don't. I mean, I don't know. Anyway, th the thing is, it's like the direction, the writing, really extracted a lot of good performances out of everybody. So I can't complain with um with what I have experienced so far. Um, I, I always think, though, you know, that they make the same mistake over and over again with these shows, uh, particularly with AI. So we got ourselves a new, um, a new primer bulb, right? And, uh, the orientation, I'm going to try to put it back, I'm putting it back the same way. It, um, it just has these tabs. See those tabs? So you kind of squeeze them together. slide into here. So. It, actually, yeah, it should just kind of push down there and clip in. So yeah, now it's clipped in. And then we have a gasket for right here. 
Uh, this is the old gasket. It has two holes right here. So the new one, I already saw the part number for that. So that one goes like that. Yeah, well anyway, I um, I thought the actress did an amazing job. I'm going to miss her if she's not going to be on the show moving forward. I never really, like, uh, you know, get crushes on actresses, man. But man, that woman, I've got the hots for her. Like, there's no tomorrow. Okay, good. So there's a hole there that needs to be able to have, to, be, to breathe. Just making sure. Okay, so that's that. We have to place this gasket back onto here. You know, you saw that part number. And then we have uh, these two kind of uh, very girthy bolts. So uh, let's have at it. You know the part number already. So this, this longer part is on this side. We're going to have to redo the magneto because the uh, air gap, we didn't set it. We just kind of like put it on. So we're going to have to uh, reset the uh, air gap on that. But for now, that's what we're going to do. So let's put that on so we got. Okay, it doesn't look like it, it blocks anything. Which is neat. Looks like this is like a gasket they made for many um, <clears throat> many trimmers. We're gonna use some like uh, gasket sealant, and then this goes like this with uh, the piston here. Uh, there was no specific orientation that I found for this. Like it could go that way or that way. There was nothing unique. That I saw. It's pretty much the same thing. It was uh, so. Let's take the piston slider bag on to here like that. I think we should probably uh, put a little bit of like um, lubricant, assembly lube on this here. Just because uh, wipe wipe that off. So I just put some assembly lube right here and uh, I'm just going to rehearse this real quick here so we don't get too screwed over. And it's going to go like that because the magneto is there. Okay. So there might be some challenges getting this back in, I think. Uh, Got to line that up. Hmm. Okay. Let's just see how easy it is to get that on. It's the best way to go about this. Oh, that's right. Remember these holds? Jesus, I almost broke this. So this piston ring here has, um, it has, uh, spaces where the, uh, the little tiny, um, no, oh man, I hope I didn't break anything. Okay. Nothing's broken. But you don't want to have those drop because this is really brittle. The ring, that is. Okay. So what we want to do is... Uh, we need to line up the... Um, Oh, 
these rings have a dot. Like a oh, there we go. A protruding um it's like a dimple of some sort. And okay. So the ring needs to be between those. It's not between those. It won't compress and go in. Right? So right now it's lined up. Get that centered up again. Okay, there we go. Let's see if this works better now. If it makes more sense to go like this. Yeah. Yep, that does. I can easily get that in. So, like that, that goes like there. Okay, perfect. I got it. Alright. So now we want to go like this. down or uh, the opposite side here. Perfect. So take these. These are T uh, two twenty seven. Yeah. So anyway, uh, Dolores, I was saying to you, uh, her departure kind of sucks. If she is no longer going to be written into the show, that she had a noble end to her character. It was really um, the way that they built up the, uh, the conflict between her and her duplicate. I forgot the woman's name. Clara? Clara? I don't know. I don't remember. But anyway, the way that they built up the, uh, the conflict between those two was pretty amazing. I thought, I thought that the uh, season three could have gone on considerably longer, as most of you probably do if you're a fan. So a lot of people that are not into the show though because they feel like it's, uh, it's jumped shark, as they say. It's a reference to the Fonz, the Fonz, the Happy Days and the Fonz when he jumped over the shark. I don't know if any, how many of you know that. Well, anyway. Yeah. So we're going to redo the air gap on that. Okay, let's... Do you want to do that right now? But you do, don't you? Yeah, let's do the air gap on that. So 
So we're going to have to loosen up those two bolts there. You can do this with a business card. Can you see? Yeah, I can see. All right. So you can do this with a business card or you can do this with um, a thickness gauge. Um, it's the same size. I haven't seen any uh, variations on it yet. So a business card would work or a thickness gauge would work. Okay, so. This, thick, this, this thickness gauge is, uh, uh, it's, it's brandless, that's nice. I was going to tell you the brand. But anyway, it comes with an interesting, the, uh, interesting, interesting enough, this bronze one right here, right? I have two of the same size sizes. Uh, the bronze here is the same exact size as this uh, aluminum one. And they're both uh, 0 0.25 millimeters or, or 0.25. Zero ten thousandths of an inch, and uh, you know they're they're for exactly this. I, I think they made the bronze one so you don't. Uh, it's more, it's more flexible, so it can get in there. You know that's what makes sense. So these are our T twenties. We said yeah. Let's loosen this up. So what you want to do, you, you want to take the, uh, you know, you've probably seen me do this before. I'll bring it around to get you a better shot. Okay, so the, okay, uh, this fl flywheels have a magnet on them, right? So you turn them, see right here, the magnet kind of grabs the, uh, grabs it, the, uh, Magnet on the flywheel grabs the magneto, right? So what you want to do, you take your uh, business card or trusty, and there's magnets, there's two magnets. There's one there and one here, right? Just got to find the best way to do this. Right, so I'm coming from this side. So you slide it in between like that. Right. And you turn this back. Alright. And then now you know you have your gap, your air gap it's called. So with your air with your air gap set, tighten this back down like this. Air gap has to be set specifically because what happens is uh that distance is optimized for the amount of like magnetism necessary to accelerate electrons to create a, um, what you get is a spark on this side and also keeps the time in too, you know. So with the distance set correctly, you will have spark. Okay, so let's can turn that. Oops. Okay, so looks like the uh, pistons colliding. Flip it over. So I've noticed something strange is happening here. This piston is colliding with the bottom of that. And I am so confused. Um, collides with that. All right, let's figure it out. Let's see what's going on. So I don't know what's going on. You might get out of uh, out of frame a little bit. I apologize in advance. Let's see if how what we messed up on here. Well, not we, probably more like more more like me. Uh, some of you knew, and I just wasn't paying attention to probably what you had to say. Right? Okay. Okay. Why would this? Do that. Yeah, I'm gonna just pull this back out. I'll widen up the shot so you can get a keep things uh 
easier to see. Okay. So, what do we have here? We have a piston. It wants to travel. Ah, oh, I see. It cuts out right there. So it does matter. Yeah. See that cut out right there? It does matter. So that piston needs to be like here. So I had to turn it around. Hey, the odds are pretty high I'll get it right. It's only two places it can go now. One way or the other. It's just 50, 50, 50, 50 chance I get it right or wrong, so. Can't say this is my genius mode. Got it? Yeah, we did. Well, that was easy. All right, well, there you go. Look for the cutout. Although, it's a good thing. It's, it's a dead giveaway, as they say. I wish I had some. Can we talk about the Charlotte and Dolores conflict a little bit? So it feels as if, like, um, Hollywood to struggle with the same issues over and over when they tell stories of like computers and artificial intelligence. So we got this set up right. I uh, just wanted to like see how that fit together. So that kind of slides on like that. Uh, witness marks are on that side. Right. Oh, great. Anyway. What I was saying is that they Hollywood tends to struggle a bit with like our artificial intelligence. Like, so why would Charlotte, which is no longer Charlotte as we know it, she's she's a copy of Dolores, right? Have all this like um, newfound animosity towards Dolores, it just didn't, it didn't make sense, you know, like, it just didn't add up, like, nothing adds up, it's the labels on the outside, and, uh, part of my issue is, like, um, how could these artificial intelligent beings, or even though they are programmed to, to learn and, and, uh, have emotional, emotions of, fe feelings of emotions, right, yet they seem to struggle with some of the very, um, problematic, parts of human nature, which is like uh, vindictiveness and uh, a narrow scope of understanding how the world works and uh, this, you know, strange obsession with like uh, their own pursuit of their own happiness versus like the greater good, you know, and it felt like um, after her family died, well not her family, but you know, the family that was, uh, she grew to to like in that car accident, she kind of uh, became this uh, vindictive homicidal maniac, you know, and uh, it just didn't add up, is what I'm saying, you know, like, why would she do that? Like, what's the incentive for her to do that? I mean, she, 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 she's a part of a, of a bigger picture, and she should have known her role, and then how did she get to that point where she uh, crosses over into like wanting to cause harm? That just doesn't add up to me, you know. Like, I, I don't know. There's something fundamentally wrong with the narrative, right there. And I think it's a it's a problem with like uh, the way writers are not able to escape like uh, human uh, human behavior, human nature. You know, to tell a story, especially a story as something as uh, foreign to humans as like artificial intelligence. You know, like, uh, it, 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 you know, at first of like, just the fact that we're talking about it itself is already flawed. I, I think uh, we don't really have enough information.
mission to calculate the uh, with any accuracy the uh, goals of an artificial intelligence. Like, why why would they feel the same way in regards to like value and like a human's values? Like, oh, I want to have a steak and screw this hot person and you know drink this expensive wine and you know love my family and take care of my progeny you know like i don't know these types of things are all very human human narratives you know what i mean they're not like things an ai would like why would i put emphasis on those things i don't know it's just hollywood doing what it does you know i don't know i have a weird feeling i should probably put some loctite on that hmm no, yes. Does it tighten over by, by the way it spins? I don't really know, I'll be honest with you. Yeah, let me lock tight it. I think we should do that. So yeah, that's my issue with like the whole Charlotte um, conflict with uh, her progeny. I mean her progenitor. It just doesn't add up to me. And the way that she decayed into this vindictiveness was uh, particularly, uh, it felt a little uh, forced in this story. You know what I mean? Yeah, it just felt forced. And I'm not buying it. Either way, I thought that she did an excellent job navigating the complexity of like her character being someone that didn't just had a extremely awkward bit of like relationship with like feelings and closeness to others you can see her kind of grow over time to to want to have that kind of closeness and yet you know needing the counsel the cutting of herself uh, uh i don't know that felt like kind of disjointed I, I didn't was there like is there something else like that happening in, in the story somewhere that I that like was did Dolores cut herself you know what I bet you like I bet you should probably if I, if I go back in time and look at some previous episodes she's probably a cutter well anyway I didn't know this if she is a cutter or not What I do know is that uh, I really didn't understand her wanting to self-mutilate. That was particularly odd. She didn't have a lot of the clusters, clusters of uh, psychopathologies that someone would associate with a cutter, you know? Yeah. Because if she cut it, that means all the, all the Dolores is cut, right? So her Charlotte cut in. And then she tried to conceal it, which was odd. So why would she do that? Okay, so I think that's good. What do you think? Yeah. Anyway, I thought the I thought the characters, those two could have done a really good job with like continuing to like have a longer drawn out feud. You know, between the two of them. Without a doubt. She had to finish up sooner or later. So I'm hoping some of you can explain the ending to me for uh, season three. So the, the uh, old characters, uh, this washer goes on top of that. Remember that one guy that was like, kind of like the uh, buddy of the the gentleman in black? Remember that guy? It wasn't Buddy, but yeah, like the gentleman in black killed his family. And then uh looked like if Dolores made a copy of him. Okay, that's a T15 inside inside of here, there's a T15 that kinda of screws into that. I should lock type that, what do you think? That can hurt. Yeah, anyway, they hop out of that van. We'll use a blue Loctite. I don't, you, I don't know if it's crazy to put more than that. 
But uh, yeah, you remember they hop out of that van and then they, uh, at the end, when they were like, talking to, uh, I don't know, I forgot how it was. But, well, anyway. No, 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 uh, yeah, the, um, the actor with the, uh, the bipolar issues, you know, the one that has to, like, uh, hit a button. <laughs> Basically, the one that had the key in his head. Like him. Should I even be using the word he? I mean, there are AI, they're generalists, right? Well, anyway, so that character, uh, At the end, with they hopped out of that van, I didn't understand what exactly happened to those characters. Like, where did they go? What did they do? You know, where did they end up? Looks like they were they just delivered the key. That's all they did. That was like a small little cameo there for key delivery. Man, Hollywood just doesn't treat all the actors properly, do they? I didn't really like the way that they um, they also treated the the, the muscle. You know, muscle being the darker skin gentleman. I thought they just kind of didn't really give that character a lot of respect. You know, it's as if they said, hey, dark skin guy, act tough, act stereotypical. You know, I hated it. I hate that stuff. You know, I enjoy a good uh, thespian, but I can tell you one thing, I thoroughly despise the uh, way that Hollywood keeps the same paradigm in place for, like, um, having certain groups, ethnic groups, that is, like, be represented, you know? I mean, and then when they do try to say, like, they branch out a little bit, you know, they, they tend to take some, like, some would call, like, an octoroon-ish looking person. You know, and say so, like, look, we have a darker skin person. And you're like, uh, <laughs> well, that person is not really dark. Dark. Anyway, it's Hollywood. You know what they do. I hate it.